Viewer discretion is advised. 10 years ago, in 1997, the Andes were shaken apart as a great entity stirred underneath. Magma burst up and flowed through towns and cities. Buildings crumbled from the intense tremors. Many lives were lost. Ten years later, the Earth cracked open, allowing humanity to catch a glimpse of a titan that lives beneath the crust of the planet, the Earth Serpent. A base was set up around the cracked Earth. Dr. Vasquez stood, staring down at the serpent. Any updates? Sir, its life signs are stable, but that's pretty much all we got right now. It could wake up at any time, and there's no telling what kind of damage it will do when it does. As Dr. Vasquez observed the serpent, he couldn't help but feel that there was something more going on. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Esoteric Class Object SCP-4568. SCP-4568, also known as Dilemma of the Twin Serpents, consists of two massive serpentine entities. SCP-4568-1 is a massive subterranean serpentine entity that resides below the Andean mountain range in South America. Current estimates indicate a length of at least 300 miles and a width of around 12 miles. The entity is animate and autonomous. It is composed of molten rock, highly compressed sediments, various metals, and ice. Sonar analysis have revealed the existence of artificial structures resembling clockwork, gears, and primitive circuits along the serpent's entire body. However, no studies have been able to determine a purpose to these structures, and they do not seem to be the mechanism behind 4568-1's autonomous movement. 4568-1 mostly remains dormant. However, at certain times, the entity displaces itself along the Andean mountain range. Due to its gargantuan size, this usually results in large-scale seismic activity of a magnitude proportional to the degree of displacement. These movements are in response to 4568-2 exiting dormancy, and the seismic activity is intentionally caused by 4568-1 in order to incapacitate 4568-2. Due to the significant casualties caused by SCP-4568-1, the entity was at first presumed to be hostile. 4568-1 is sapient, with above-human intelligence and very high mimetic resistance. While not actively hostile, it is aware of the casualties resulting from its seismic activity and considers them a regrettable necessity to restrain 4568-2. SCP-4568-2 is a marine, sapient, serpentine entity of comparable size to SCP-4568-1. It is comprised of water, sand, algae, and steam. It often incorporates extant marine life forms into its mass. These do not appear to be harmed by their absorption into 4568-2, although they exhibit some degree of usually beneficial mutation after exposure. Marine life forms have proven themselves capable of extricating and reincorporating themselves into 4568-2's mass at any time. 4568-2 is actively hostile to human life, having repeatedly expressed an intention to eradicate humanity. 4568-2 claims that its goal is to stop a great calamity that will result in the destruction of nature and the consequent elimination of all life on Earth. While at first this was thought to refer to some sort of ecological disaster, further statements by SCP-4568-2 now suggest that this would be a tangential after-effect of a MK-class end-of-human consciousness scenario of undetermined origin. 4568-2 is capable of using resonance effects and vibrations to force water and other fluids to take on specific shapes. It employs this technique to maintain its own shape during its active periods and to cause massive tidal waves and anomalous oceanic activity. The seismic activity induced by 4568-1 disrupts these abilities, making SCP-4568-2 unable to maintain a consistent form out of water and forcing it into periods of dormancy. Council, based on the assumption that SCP-4568 is a sapient entity and is actively hostile towards humankind, I, on behalf of my research team, pose it that 4568 should be temporarily neutralized. Temporarily? Why not just kill it? Or better yet, contain the entity in order to study it. It is simply too large for any current technology to kill or contain. The logistics to do so would be a nightmare. Plus, I get the feeling it's not doing it out of malice. Doctor, you are a scientist. Unless you can back up your feelings with facts, I say that a permanent solution is required. We have to put an end to this menace. The rest of the council all nodded in agreement. 
Very well then. If we are to go down that route, my team and I have come up with a solution that may work against 4568. Let's hear it, Doctor. We will inject a hostile memetic agent via a payload. That's our best bet. May God see us through this. The operation began as planned. While the memetic injection failed to fully neutralize the entity, it succeeded in temporarily incapacitating it. A research base was set up around the unconscious entity to monitor its activity. Eight hours later, a tremor began to shake the earth. Deep rumbling sounds penetrated through the base's thick shield walls and shook Foundation personnel to their core. The entity had regained consciousness. All stations stand by. Get ready to fire. Wait, hold. The doctor and his team monitored their instruments as the entity remained in place. Over the following hours, it initiated a series of small but continuous tremors following a specific pattern. These tremors have a deliberate feel to them, just like before. It's like Morse code. Morse code? That's ridiculous! Get the linguist and cryptologist. If it is trying to communicate with us, we need to figure out its message. And surely enough, a message was deciphered from the series of tremors and was translated. Humans of Foundation, are you truly the protectors of Earth and balance? If so, allow me to complete my mission. Or lies deep in the sea, fueled by fear and twisted righteousness. What I do is the only way to stop them. I regret the loss of life due to my actions every day. But to not take action would lead to ten times as many deaths. In the sea? Is there another such entity? If the message is true, it sounds like it's trying to prevent something terrible. But what? While the debate regarding the interpretation of the message was still ongoing, Foundation personnel received automated alerts of significant anomalous oceanic activity along the Pacific coast. Deep Sea Sonar was deployed, and a massive serpentine entity provisionally designated SCP-4568-2, apparently composed of water and unidentified biological material, was detected. It emerged near Chile, causing a large-scale disruption in oceanic patterns. Council, if we let this go on, it will result in more devastating tsunamis that will wash over coastal settlements all along the Pacific. Millions of lives will be lost. But what if 4568 is our only chance? In its message, it talked about fighting against a certain terror in the sea, and now the threat has showed itself. Surely it would be wise to ally with 4568 against the sea serpent. Can the memetic payload be used against it again? That's the best shot we have. This time, we'll use it against both of them. However, this time, both serpents resisted Foundation's attempt. Another series of tremors were registered, from which the following message as deciphered. I am very, very sorry. This is the only way. The Earth Serpent shook its body once again, sending great waves through the Earth and water, disrupting the Sea Serpent's form and thus preventing it from taking shape and causing mass destruction. The Sea Serpent's roar dissipated with the waves as it returned to dormancy. Though the Sea Serpent was stopped, a magnitude 8 earthquake was caused by the Earth Serpent's action, tearing apart coastal Chile. Again, human lives were lost. What do we do? The Sea Serpent was quelled by Earth Serpent, but at what cost? They're just fighting each other while humans perish. The Earth Serpent claimed to be fighting against the evil Sea Serpent to prevent the destruction of mankind. But what if it all leads to the same outcome? Can we really trust it? The doctor was devastated by the loss of life. He despaired at man's powerlessness in the struggle against two rival titans. He walked out towards the broken Earth, where he caught a glimpse of the Earth Serpent's great body deep underground, pulsating steadily. Earth Serpent. I don't know if you can hear or understand me, but if you are truly on our side, please give us a sign. We must stop this needless sacrifice of lives. If what you told us is true, we must work together. Moments later, the earth beneath his feet shook, and the Foundation's interpreters sprang into action. Foundation, I know you cannot trust me, much less while you are still mourning your dead. I know what I did, just as I know the extremes you are willing to go to protect your kin. Yet we will never be equals, even though we share the same goals. You know, my brother, whom you call the Sea Serpent, also believes his duty to be of protection. There is a threat hiding beyond the stars, something incomprehensible, even to us. The human mind is a burning beacon in a sea of darkness. Would extinguishing it divert the attention of this threat? My brother seems to believe so. But I wonder, would it be worth it in the end? Dr. Vasquez was elated that he could communicate with the Earth Serpent and was excited by the possibility of cooperation. Of course it's worth it. 
The threat that you speak of will not stop at humanity. Soon they will come for you and your brother. And if we're gonna stop this threat, we need him. We need the sea serpent's power. Dr. Vasquez and his team waited, but the earth serpent did not answer. Days later, another set of tremors were detected. However, these did not originate from the earth serpent, but from the sea. Humans, I'm sure you can see it. How your world dies a little bit more every day, mostly by your own hand, no? You poison the oceans, tank the rivers, blacken the skies. You do not need angels of death to end your world. But there is something else, and I see it on the bottom of your eyes. Something unforgettable, inconceivable ideas cloaked in madness and impossible colors. Do you think I will let you drag the rest of the world down with you? Do you think I will leave this world, my world, to die in flames? It's the sea serpent. Whoa. The earth trembled as the earth serpent spoke once more. My brother, do you really think this death will solve it all? I can see the threat too. It hurts to think about it. I see it everywhere. The pressure, the suffocation, the dangers from beyond the stars. I know what will happen when it descends, and yet I think you are misguided. An idea exists only because some living thing was able to think of it. Have you even considered how such terrible concepts could have been given form? What if you were playing into the creature's hands? Why should I believe you? Why should I believe that such words come from anything but sheer cowardice? You know we have to do it. You protect the land, I protect the seas. And we both know what the enemy is. Yet here you are, protecting mankind. Even though they will be the gateway for the ones who threaten us. Foundation, do you want to know why I am protecting humanity? Wouldn't it be easier to just let go? And maybe letting my brother do what he wants will really stop the threat approaching our world and easy exit. But that is something I like about you, about mankind. However tempting it is to take the simplest path to just give up, there will always be some among you who refuse this path. There will always be someone who stands up against the dark, even if it takes a thousand million years to emerge victorious. I will save this world, humans. You won't be able to stop me. This is the only way. And I will do the same, brother. I will protect humanity against the threat. And you. Following that exchange, the Foundation decided to allow the Earth Serpent's activity to go on unimpeded, and containment proposals are to focus on mitigation procedures, as this was viewed as the only way to prevent further losses. As for the threat from beyond the stars, its nature is yet to be determined. 